welcome everyone. My name is Mary Eleanor Power and uh, I am the uh, Director of Marketing and Communications for Dalhousie University's College of Continuing Education. And thank you for joining us uh, for today's webinar on project management in today's environment. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We are all treaty people. And I'd like to introduce Janice Petley, uh, so Janice has over 20 years of project management experience. Her typical assignments are definitely project management, but are anything but typical. Her experience spans a wide range of projects from classical theater at a Stratford festival and symphony concerts in the United States to stadium and arena opera productions in cities such as Tokyo, Munich, and Brussels. Whether it was a large sporting event at the Rogers Center or an opera with a cast of a thousand in a bull ring in Madrid, Janice has worked on high risk, innovative, challenging projects. As many of her events were broadcast live to air both nationally and internationally, she fully understands the necessity of flawless project execution. She holds a BA from the University of Western Ontario, a BED from Queen's University, an MBA, and is designated as a project management professional and a certified agile project manager. Thanks very much, Janice, for joining us and over to you. Okay, thank you very much. So you, here, here, I thought I'd put our, both, our, both our pictures up here, but you can see both of us, but I'm going to present and Mary Eleanor is going to uh, help monitor the chat and she's gonna launch a poll when the time comes and that sort of thing. So, so the two of us are gonna work, are gonna work together on this. And I think you've all found now your, your chat window and we've got some information about industries and, and Ariana has already read that out. So it seems like we've got quite a variety going on here. But what I would like to find out about is a bit more about your project experience. And Mary Eleanor, if you could launch the poll and then people can answer the poll, there's not a right or wrong answer. It's just nice to know who's out there and how much experience you have had in projects. Doesn't mean you've been managed them in a brilliant manner but just however you've been managing them. Yeah, go ahead. As the host, yeah. Janice, you can in fact launch the poll. So you, you can see it down there. I am not seeing it, but um, you should be able to see it down, down at the bottom of your screen there. Hmm, I'm not seeing it either. Let's see. Okay. Um, yep. Okay, well, let me let me investigate that, but perhaps we can just um, loop back on that. We will uh, just we will just loop back on that. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the schedule for today. We're going to talk a little bit about why project management skills are important. And in any presentation, I always like to have a takeaway, something you can actually use to help you improve your efficiency on projects. Then we'll talk a little bit about the certificate in project management at Dalhousie and then there'll be some time for question and answer. Now you can write your question in at any time in the chat window because Mary Eleanor will monitor that. Uh, so don't feel you have to wait to the very end. You can write it in at any time. I might not answer maybe till we finish a section or I may answer them at the end just to make sure we cover all the material, but um, write it in your questions at any time. So the first question we have to address is what is a project? And this is the definition we're going to use for project. It's a temporary endeavor and it's undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Unique meaning it hasn't been done before in its entirety. And a product service, that's easy to get our head around what that is. But projects also are to create results. It could be an attitudinal change. It could be the development of a skill. So product, service, or result, it's unique, it's temporary, it has a beginning and an end. So what's the difference then between business as usual or what we call operations? and projects. Well, business as usual, operational work is very repeatable. There's, there's not a lot of unknowns, not a lot of surprises. You know, the structure is very permanent and people tend to work in their silo within their department. So think of manufacturing, think perhaps maybe of accounts payable, accounts receivable, that repetitive type work. Projects on the other hand are unique. There's risk involved because we haven't done it before. And the structures we put in place for projects are temporary as opposed to more of a permanent structure on the other side, on the business as usual side. And we need to work in cross-functional teams. We need to work with people from different departments. So the, the environment is very different in terms of business as usual and projects, even though both coexist in our organizations. But the big thing is that projects introduce change. 
So a little bit more on, on project work, you know, we've been doing more and more projects and less operations for years. That, so the trend has just hasn't just started. This has been the case for many, many years. Because, and it's, and it's in due, due in part um, to technology, automation, information technology, you know, so we really do have a lot more project work than we ever did. So this was a strong trend. And then there was the pandemic. And people started working virtually. Now we have to use new technology, different technology, new processes. People's routines are completely upside down because of kids and school and how that impacts work. Probably there were you can probably think of projects that were happening in your organization that were no longer practical. They had to just be put on hold or canceled. And other projects that appeared completely out of nowhere where someone never imagined, you know, that's what kind of project they were, would be doing. I'm thinking of a company that manufactured dog beds of all things. And they went, hmm, I wonder if we can manufacture PPE. And uh, yeah, maybe we can. So they very quickly retooled and started making masks. I mean, what a major project that was to, to actually retool suddenly from making dog beds to making, to making masks. But so many organizations were changing direction. And so that's projects or we're changing direction within our own organization in order to continue to get our work done. So a lot of, a lot of change happened and a lot more projects were created because of the pandemic. So project management is, is really helpful because it helps us align our initiatives uh, with our business strategy and our goal, and we can focus on our, our goals and objectives. We do a, a, a document called a project charter, and that's something we spend quite a bit of time on in project management essentials, and people find it, it very helpful because it initiates a project and it makes sure the project is aligned with what we're trying to achieve as an organization. It also helps us focus on planning. So the different things we would put in the project plan, budget, schedule, scope, you know, risk, communications, there's all kinds of things we would put in our project plan. So it helps us focus on that. And it also helps us communicate in a cross-functional manner so we can communicate more easily with people in different departments, different areas of the organization, which is crucial with, uh, with projects. So when organizations have these project management competencies, you know, they're much more able to change, improve, learn, adapt, all these things. Now, some organizations that were not strong in PM competencies, they, they probably struggled a lot when they had to suddenly pivot during the, during the pandemic. Uh, now, maybe some of them got there eventually in terms of where they needed to go, but it was probably rather painful. And it may have cost them a lot more time, a lot more money, staff frustration, and other people would have pivoted much faster and been much more successful. So organizations that actually have PM competencies just simply survive environmental change much better than others. So will we need uh, to continue um, to develop PM competencies? It, will the, the need increase? What do people think? You can just type in the chat window. Do you think we're going to actually have more of this? Or I, I'm still looking for that reset button. You know, in a science fiction movie, they have that reset button. And uh, you can just kind of restore where we were before. Um, I don't know that we have that. You know, I don't know that, that we can just go back where we were. I think we're going to continue hurtling forward at an incredibly rapid pace. So what are people saying in the chat window? Do we think the need is going to increase? Yes. Lots of lots of yeses. Yes, absolutely. Flexibility and adaptation is more important than ever, for sure. Yes. Um, so, yeah, resounding yeses. No noes that I can see. Okay. Yeah. No. That 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 I think is the case. Uh, I don't think the toothpaste is ever going back in the tube. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So we'll always we'll always need project management uh, skills. Now, what I'd like to do now, you can always type in any questions you have about just about that first part of the presentation, but I'd like to move on to the tool we're gonna to talk about today, uh, which is the assumptions log. So what is an assumption? You know, it's, it's um, something that for planning purpose, we, we consider to be true or, or, or certain, but we don't actually have proof of that. We make an assumption that something's true, uh, but we don't know that. We haven't had anyone prove that to us just yet. And it may be not possible to actually have that proven to us just yet. So do we sometimes have to make assumptions? Actually, we do. You know, there are, there are times when that's the only thing we can do is make an assumption. But if we're going to make an assumption, 
um, such as one of these assumptions here, we probably will not have any issues getting the new staff trained in time for project beta. We don't know for sure, but we're saying we probably won't. We're not saying we won't, we're just saying we probably won't. That's an assumption. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there. There's a little bit of a gray area there. Or how about this one? The equipment is thought to be in good working order and should be available to us when we need it. How many times does someone have a statement like one of those two? It's not a fact, it's not a certainty. There's an assumption being made, but is everybody making the same assumption? Are people making assumptions that are actually in conflict with each other? And is anyone tracking these assumptions? Are we actually having somebody check on that equipment to make sure it is in good working order? Or are we just going, yeah, yeah, it should be fine, should be fine. Well, that's not the same as knowing it is fine. So this is a tool we can use. It's called an assumptions log. And I really like this, this document. It's so simple. You can create your own template for it if you want and, and put in the, you know whatever works in your environment. But I love to have assumptions numbered because when you're actually communicating with someone about an assumption, you can some of these assumptions may be very similar. So you can say assumption number eight, for example. So you can reference, you have the date, you know, the name of the, the, the assumption and, and a description of the assumption. Now the next two columns, you can put low, medium, high in terms of the level of uncertainty. How uncertain is this assumption? Are we relatively confident about this assumption or are we really just kind of so-so? And then what is the impact? Like, what is the impact if it actually turns out not to be true? Is it kind of like, well, eh, no big deal. Or is it actually something that could have a major impact on our project? Then in the next column, we put owner. Now the owner is not the person whose fault it is or anything like that. They did, they, they're not culpable in any way, but they're the person closest to the assumption who can follow that assumption and then confirm it or refute it. So they're what we call the owner of the assumption. And then we want to have a plan to mitigate. Is there some way that we can actually reduce the uncertainty of this assumption? And if this assumption turns out to be true, what can we do? How can we actually deal with that if it turns, if it turns out to be true? And then we want to have a date when it's going to be reviewed. We don't want to just have this assumption just kind of rolling on forever. And then we can either say that the status is open or that it's closed and actually document when, it's, when, that, when that particular assumption is closed. So that's the little tool there. Does anyone have any, any questions about that? Now, Mary Eleanor, I believe they have this, is this tool something they can download? You've got that for them? Yes, so that will be distributed later today. So we will be okay. sending a follow-up email to everyone with a recording of today's webinar, as well as a spreadsheet um, that, that looks a lot like this um, that you can use. So a nice bonus takeaway that Janice has provided all of you. So stay tuned for that email later today. Perfect, all okay. right. So now the next little section, um, and of course you can type in a question, questions in about assumptions logs if you like, but I'm gonna move on now and we're gonna talk about the certificate in project management at Dalhousie University. And we have three core courses and then you have to take one optional credit. Now I did pop the schedule up there. Project management essentials we normally do three times a year and we will eventually be getting back in the classroom. Right now we are working in an asynchronous manner, or sorry, blended manner. So we've got some live sessions and some work you do on your own. And then with the comprehensive core skills and enhanced skills, we're doing half day sessions, virtual, live with a live instructor. And then we will have, and then eventually we'll probably have one that remains on, one a year that remains online and then one a year that's in the classroom. So that allows people to, to choose whichever format is gonna work best for them. Same thing with enterprise and strategic analysis. Right now we are online. We do two a year. We'll probably end up with one online and one in the classroom. Certified Agile Project Manager. Now that one is actually, um, that's half days. I should have indicated that. That one is online. And one of the big advantages of working in a virtual environment is we're able to have a really fabulous instructor who is not able to travel right now. And so we are able to actually have the advantage of having that individual teach this course, teach that course. And then the other optional credit is the uh, technical writing essentials. And I've heard good things about this course for years. It's a very popular course. So the three top ones are core, are core courses and then you pick one of the options. So if you're involved in writing business cases and sort of the upfront strategic part that actually happens even before the project, you might find that enterprise and strategic analysis is the fit. 
If you are in a very high change environment where requirements are really difficult to define and certainly difficult to define up front, uh, a lot of people in IT then will go, will go towards this certified agile project manager course. And maybe those who are in more technical roles may find that the technical writing essentials is the, is the perfect optional credit for them. So who should take, who can take the program? Well, you know, it can be people that are brand new to projects or it could be people that actually have been doing projects, but just need a better understanding of the tools and techniques. So we get a range of people in these courses, especially, uh, you know, starting at the beginning, uh, you know, in terms of essentials, it's a real range. Usually with the comprehensive, people have, have more experience called comprehensive core skills and comprehensive um, enhanced skills. So we have people ranging from project managers to team members, uh, support staff, subject matter experts. People will often take project management because they want to enhance their, their resume. I've had people say, you know what, the reason I got that job was because I had that project management course on, 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 my, on my CV. So I have had that comment so many times over the years. So it does enhance your marketability. Some people might want to move toward a international certification, either the CAPM or the PMP. So this is a, a great launching launch launching um, tool to get you going in that direction. And really anyone, any, any, any discipline, any industry. And uh, we certainly had a bunch of different folks typing in from pharmaceuticals to not-for-profit and when people were typing into the, into the, the chat window. So just a closer look at a few of these courses. So essentials, we go from beginning to end and we have two case studies and we're working in teams. It's quite, a, it's, quite a fun, it's quite a fun course, but we actually see an entire project take place. Then with the comprehensive, we have two comprehensive courses. We have the core skills and then we have the enhanced skills. And with the core skills, we focus on integration, stakeholders, scope, schedule, and cost. We focus on those knowledge areas. And then in the other one, when we do the enhanced skills, we focus on communications, quality, procurement, risk, and resources on those four. And then we have this agile uh, course as well. And this is uh, for high change environments, high risk, high change environments where you cannot define your requirements up front. So you need to take a completely different approach. This is not a beginner course. It's a course for people who've already taken some, of, some portion of the certificate in project management, people are working in an agile environment, uh, people with project management skills, but this course actually leads to a certification. Uh, there is a little exam, but don't worry about it. You'll be fine if you wanna take it, if you, you're there and you're working hard and you're paying attention and uh, you'll have a certification from the Project Management Association of Canada at the end of the course. Now, I won't go too much into that particular course because we're actually going to have a webinar on that course. And Kevin Iguana was gonna deliver that webinar and I believe that's April 27th. Mary Eleanor can correct me if I'm wrong on that date, but I believe that's the date we have set for Kevin. Yes. Perfect, yes. And Ke Kevin is, 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 uh, is an amazing presenter. He's, he's just Mr. Agile in Canada. You know, he um, he wrote the book. He literally wrote the book. Uh, so uh, you know, at, that's going to be a, that's going to be a great webinar. And uh, that that course is actually coming up in a few weeks. So for those with PM experience already or have already taken some training, then this would be a great a great uh, course for them to take. All right, how are we doing for time? Oh, I think we're we're in good time. We have a, a good amount of time to field any questions. Perfect. And, uh, the poll, I do see it in the in the in the background. It was created, but for some reason is not visible for us to bring up. Um, and uh, and and not sure if you see it on the bottom of your screen there, Janice. But perhaps we can just open it up for people to provide some idea for Janice as to yeah, the number sure. of years um, that you have in project management experience. So if you want to add into the chat um, mm -hmm. the number of years um, that uh, you've been working in a project management capacity. Um, as well as any questions that you might have, um, then feel free to, to add those in. And Janice, maybe just to kick us off, can you give us a sense of what, of what those live sessions will be like, how they'll be structured? Yes, I absolutely can do that. For Project Management Essentials, what we do with that course is we do 75-minute sessions and we do six of them. 
And we tend to go like Wednesday, Friday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we'll do either two or three a week. And then between the sessions, people have work that they do. And the work is already all prepackaged on a learning management system. And so they can either review the lesson that we just did, and then they'll have a certain amount of work they need to do before the next class. They're encouraged not to try to get ahead. And then we come together uh, six times. And during that time, we, um, we actually work in groups. So we actually divide into teams. I put people in teams and each class, there's like an exercise or a tool that people use. I'll describe it. They'll get a chance to practice it, working in, an, in, in, in a team. And then we come back together, we debrief, we discuss. And so that's the format for that course. And we find that they blended with having the live sessions and then also the, the other work that people can do on their own time suits a lot of people. It's actually, it's actually been pretty popular. And, and so people find that that's quite helpful. And we may continue with that and always have at least one of those running every year because it allows people to join that would not normally be able to, you know, maybe come, come to Halifax and be in a classroom for three days. So that, so the tool that we use um, uh, has ability to do the breakout rooms. It has polls. Uh, people can annotate. There's all kinds of features that, that it has. Uh, so it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a rich tool and uh, people seem to enjoy, people seem to enjoy it once they get the, the hang of it. And maybe you can just shed some light. I am monitoring the chat. So if anyone has any questions or, or wants to share um, how many years experience they have in, in a project management role, um, feel free. Um, but I'll just jump in with, um, maybe if you've got to offer some comment on the range of project management courses and free offerings and really what, what makes this different? What sets it apart? Because there are lots of, lots of different institutions, private, public sector that offer some variation on project management training. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing um, off the top is that um, our courses are compliant with the um, project management body of knowledge, which is issued by the Project Management Institute. And uh, they have just recently changed over what they call their registered education provider program to an authorized training provider and Procept is an authorized training provider and there are not that many of them in Canada that actually have been authorized by the Project Management Institute to deliver their courses. So we actually have our own processes for, uh, for training instructors and uh, training instructors, if they're going to teach a new course, we actually require that each instructor who's going to teach virtually goes through a training program that they actually have to deliver to other instructors, be critiqued by other instructors, and actually uh, convert a classroom course to an online course to show that they know how to do that. So that's what you're going to be getting when you have the instructors with the Procept, uh, with Procept is that it's not just, you know, hey, here's someone just going to, who has one course they teach as a hobby. This, this, is, this is what we do and we do it professionally and we do it from coast to coast at, um, for several different organizations and learning institutions. Oh, I see a question here. It says, return there to is. work. Uh, did many nonprofit projects while not, oh, you did many while not, while not paid work. Many of the jobs I'm interested in require PM. Are there a certain number of hours of PM work required as a prerequisite tool? No, 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 absolutely not. You would be... You know what, I think you'd be a fabulous addition to Project Management Essentials because in that course we get a real range and the experience you've had in the not-for-profits is very valuable and I think sometimes it gets people who are working maybe in a more structured or, you know, an engineering environment, it, may, it gives them pause to think about the fact that, you know, maybe some things are being done differently in other organizations, it might actually be better. Or maybe they may realize that they're actually having the same problem you are. So maybe some of these sectors aren't as different after all. Mm -hmm. um, Yuseni's just asked here, um, and there, so there are two questions. Um, do you need anything special with regard to internet access for the course? Um, you probably need a, a reasonably stable internet connection. Uh, so if you're on di rural dial-up, um, you can still get on, but, you know, it might not be as ideal. So a good internet connection is, is, is preferred. Google Chrome on your computer. You need it installed on your computer. You don't have to open the program with Google Chrome. 
But if when we go into the breakouts, you, the, the program will actually search for Google and Chrome and, and, and launch that. So Google Chrome. A headset is actually really helpful as well. Not everybody uses it, but um, when they don't have a headset on, I have a little headset on here. Uh, when they don't have it on, often the very first word of a sentence gets cut off. So a headset is also helpful. And then what that does as well is it just reduces background noise. But those Great. would be the, the three things. Mm -hmm. Great. And there's a question here, um, and, and it, it perhaps draws out some of what you've, you've already mentioned, but perhaps to reiterate, um, how, does the, how does this course or set of courses, if someone chooses to pursue um, more courses after this initial one, um, how does it help someone in pursuing a role in project management field? Well, any kind of project management course on a resume is helpful. Uh, employers like to see that because so much more of what we're doing is, is projects. So when you've got project management experience, they just know they have uh, you know, an employee or a contractor who has a great deal more flexibility, who has more tools in their toolkit and is probably going to be able to you know, deliver greater functionality in terms of what they can offer the organization. Mm -hmm. Janice, could you speak to just building on that a little bit? I wonder if there's also an element of being a, a thought leader or a, a person that might encourage a bit of a, a culture shift or culture change as a result of being trained in project management. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I think so. I think that's a, that's a really, good, really good point because when we have some training in project management, we now have a whole lot more questions that we ask. You know, we don't just do what we're told to do <laughs> in mm -hmm. that, in that, in that, it, you know, someone might come along and say, oh, I want you to put in such and such a system. You go, oh, okay. Well, that's what we used to do. You know, we used to just kind of implement whatever system someone told us to put in or go build what someone told us to build. But now we go, well, wait a minute. Um, can you explain why we're doing this as opposed to this? Or, or have you looked at alternatives? Is, do we really need a new system? Or should we investigate if we simply need more training on the current system? So mm -hmm. as a project manager, you start asking more questions of your organization. Mm -hmm. And you don't just blindly charge off on a project without understanding how it is aligned with the strategic goals of the organization. Because everything we do needs to align with what we're trying to do as an organization. You never want to be in a situation where someone says, why are we doing this project? And everyone goes, I don't know, because we were told to do it. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not a good reason. You know, we want to make sure that it's aligned, that we're actually furthering the, uh, with this initiative, the goals and objectives and mm -hmm. strategic plan of the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, really interesting. Um, we have a comment here from Emily. She says, thank you so much. It's good to get an idea. And, and I'm, glad, um, I'm glad that this, and I hope that for many others, they feel the same way that this webinar has given them a sense of what they could get out of, of a course, the course in project management essentials, and then how that could be layered onto uh, a, a certification in, in project management or designation as a, a project, manage, um, project management uh, professional. So... Sorry, go ahead, so, Jana. Yeah, and some people like to have a chat. You know, some people want to say, but I'm not sure. Well, if you're not sure, or maybe you just need uh, to be able to explain to someone why you need the funding to take this particular course or this particular program. But if you have any questions or if you need a bit more backup in terms of why this will be beneficial or if it's right for you, if it's right for you now, that sort of thing. You can always shoot me an email and I can respond and I'm also available. We could set up a time and chat if that would be helpful. And that way that, uh, you know, you're making the decisions, the best decisions possible uh, for your, for your professional development. That's great. And uh, so we're just, we're at uh, 12 o'clock uh, here in, in Nova Scotia for those who are joining us perhaps outside of Nova Scotia. So we will wrap up, but I will reiterate before we do that, we will be sending out an email later today. It'll have a link to today's, record, uh, today's webinar, recording of the webinar, as well as a link to the course that Janice was mentioning, Project Management Essentials. And um, as well, we will be providing a bonus takeaway, which is that spreadsheet, the assumptions log that Janice mentioned earlier and walked us through. So um, I hope that all of you have enjoyed 
uh, being part of today's webinar. I hope that it's given you just some teaser information for you to take away and, and, uh, and think about. And uh, thanks as always, Janice, for joining us and hosting today's webinar. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Okay. All right, Absolutely. take care everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.